Hey there. So I, on my last video, I talked about Cabo. I was down there. I actually stayed in San Jose de Cabo, not Cabo San Lucas. Uh, I like the art scene down in San Jose, San Jose de Cabo. So why was I down there? The reason I was down there was to renew my residency and, of course, have fun in Cabo. So I did residency for a year last year. I did a video about it, which you can watch on this channel. And after your first year, you have to renew it. Okay, that's fine. And you can renew it for one, two, or three years. I don't know why you would do renew for anything less than three since it's just a couple hundred extra bucks. But I did. I renewed it for three years. So we're going to go into how I did it, why I did it, and um, my experience with the service that I used down in Cabo. Okay, to start with, the service I used with Co was Cabo Expat Services. Uh, why did I use them instead of the guys I used before? Simple, try somebody new. Uh, they were down there, gave them a call. They were quick to respond on email. When I say give a call, I just send them an email. And they were quick to respond, so I used them. Uh, I'm afraid that's as complicated as, as, as it got. You know, I just Googled, oh, here's three different places, shoot out emails, let's see who responds fastest. These guys did. So... I'm looking up the cost here. Uh, I renewed for three years. It was 9,639 pesos to renew for three years. At the time this is was in February of 2023, the exchange rate is about 1884. So that was $539 basically uh, of a fee. And that fee goes directly to Mexican government. The, uh, Cabo Expect Services charged me $400 for their service. What did I get for that $400? Simple. They filled out all the forms for me. They came to the interview with me. They guided me through the process. Uh, they didn't actually interact with the um, folks at the counter. Didn't need to. They kind of hang back. Let you do your own thing because they think that you get called faster and sooner if it doesn't look like you have a lawyer or somebody representing you. That may or may not be true. I don't know. I, I certainly went fast, and it was quite easy with them being nearby. I did need them. Uh, immigration officers spoke uh, better English than my Spanish, that's for sure, uh, passable English, and uh, we got the process done. And it was super easy. All the forms were filled out by the expat, uh, Cabo Expat Services. They gave me the forms uh, there at the immigration office downstairs. You... Basically, the way immigration is working now, it's different from when I did it last time. It's first come, first serve. So you show up at, they open at 9. You better be there pretty early because they only take so many a day. I got there at like 8, 8.15, got my name on the list, went over and grabbed breakfast, came back, went upstairs. They had some sort of semblance of a line and order as you walked in based on when you first showed up and got your name on the list. Super simple. Went up, did my interview. Showed the forms. Uh, if you change your address, you need to file a change of address form. You actually are supposed to do that within 30 or 90 days of that change of address. I always stay at the same Airbnb, so I don't have to deal with that. And the Airbnb I stay at is very friendly. They let you have your electric bill, so you can take your electric bill to prove your residency, which is a requirement. Some sort of bill. Electric bill is one of them. Uh, so and the... Airbnb I stay at, I also de 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 detailed out a year ago on this channel. Um, fast internet, great f location. It's it's just a great place to stay if you're looking on the cheap. So in solid internet, really great internet. So I do that. They say, come back. And, uh, we'll send you a message in a week or two to get your uh, card. I wasn't really happy about that. I talked to the... Uh, folks at Cabo Expat, they said, ah, they always say that, but we'll probably hear something from them today. Well, we did. Uh, I just went back the next day and got my card, and that was it. It's a super simple process. So now let's sort of break down the requirements for 2023 to get your temporary or your permanent card. So... <sighs> Mexico is getting kind of pricey. For 2023, and I'm reading this off my phone here, uh, for a temporary resident, now, if if you recall from the earlier vis video that I did, there's a couple ways to calculate 
um, your your monthly income, what they require. One is a minimum daily wage. It's a multiple of that. And the other one is UMD, UMA, which for the life of me, I don't remember what it means. I, I looked real quick, couldn't find it. So UMA is what you, they use in Mexico. So if you're going to a Mexican consulate, that's what they would use. If you're going for a foreign consulate, they tend to use the minimum daily wage uh, multiple. It's that is much higher than the, than the UMA requirements. The Mexican government has been encouraging the consulates to use the lower number. The consulates don't have to listen to that. They can do whatever they want. And certainly the consulate that I went to in Portland uh, back when I did my first year temporary residency, they use the higher value. Uh, for renewal, they didn't ask. And the, uh, my facilitator said, you don't need it for the renewal. So I never had to worry about this. But if you're going for your first one now, for a temporary residency starting in the U.S. using that minimum wage multiple, you need to show $3,275 in monthly income. That is a pretty good chunk of change for some folk. Uh, if you're in Mexico, it's 1638 If you're going for permanent resident, the monthly income even is higher. It's $5,459 a month. If you're down in Mexico for the UMA, it's 2730 Now, that is, that's pretty crazy, actually. So, if you're, you don't have to show minimum income. You can also just show savings. And that's actually what I did was show savings. Why? Just because it was easier. And you have to have uh, six to 12 months, depending on who you're talking to, uh, bank statements to prove it. So if you're going for savings account for temporary residency, and these numbers are all for the individual families differ, but for the individual for temporary residency for savings, based on the minimum daily, what you'd have to prove up in the U.S., that'd be $54,589 in your savings account. Uh, if you're going off the UMA number down in Mexico, it's 27000 So you do have to have a chunk of change saved up. For permanent residents, that shoots all the way up to $218,358 in your bank account for the last six months if you're doing the minimum wage multiple output in the States. If you're doing... Just UMA at the Mexican consulate, it's 109000 So these numbers vary pretty wildly. So um, it's hit or miss what your consulate's going to do up in the States, and hopefully the Mexican ones are going to follow the Mexican guidelines. Uh, but certainly we don't see that necessarily up in the States. Uh, again, when I did my renewal, didn't have to show anything. So I don't know if I'll have to show anything for permanent, but I was talking some money in a savings account to make sure I got it if I need it. Okay, so as you can see, the process is relatively simple to do. You have to have money and, you know, just hire a facilitator unless your Spanish is spot on. Same advice I gave for the Ecuadorian uh, residency, just hire somebody to do it for you. I mean, this we're uh, doing this, you know, digital nomad or slow mad in my case because I'm kind of trying to save up for permanent residency, so I'm having to hang out in countries a little longer, but I'm loving it, so it doesn't matter. But, uh, you know... Is we got the money, so now's a good time to get that residency. Pay somebody to do it for you. Skip the headaches. I hope you find this stuff interesting, and I'll be back with another video of kind of why I've got residency in two places now and my general strategy. Take care. Bye.